guys, good Wednesday morning. My name is Jerry Miller and welcome to Real Talk, an insider's guide to real estate life and the pursuit of happiness. Today's show presented by Ross Mortgage and Scott Mortgage Morris. Just an all around A plus dude that um, knows Charlottesville through his uh, gallivanting escapades from childhood into adulthood. Scott is of Ross Mortgage, A plus people, and questions have already come in. We know it's a good show when questions start in the eight o'clock hour for our, our hosts. Keith Smith, um, one of the principals of Yes Realty Partners, find them online, yesrealtypartners.com, A plus people. Jonas, certainly. Keith, we love as well. <laughs> Oh, it's funny. I was at a I was at a I was at a meeting the other day that I was I was described as Yona's husband. And you and you smiled and loved it. <laughs> smiled it like it was a business meeting. Yeah, and yeah, that's Yona's husband, right? So and, and in Culpepper, I get Doctor Eppard's husband. So yeah, really, that's great. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, she both outkicked your coverage. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yona is watching. She gives the heart um, emoji on the program or a hearts the feed over here. We love you, Yona. We love you dearly and sincerely. Um, all right, gentlemen. Um, it is Wednesday. February 16th. So some of the macro data suggest um, nationally, nationally, uh, nationally, which I'm sure you saw, I mean, you follow this closely than I do, that applications are, are, are trending a bit lower. Yeah. Um, so are we talking about the, the M- MCAI? Yeah. yeah. All right. So yes, that was true for conventional, but for government product that, so they were down uh, uh, just under a percent um, at, for conventional product and up uh, just over half a percent uh, for government product. So a, almost a wash. Um, so, and that's probably price points. I'm sure that California plays a big, big part in that. Um, they, like everyone else, are going through a, a you know, there's, there's no inventory. And there's no inventory in, a neighbor, you know, in an entire state where their average price point is almost a million dollars. So I'll read the question verbatim and then get out of your guys' way. You guys are the pros. It's from Paul Hendricks. We love, we love you, Paul. Um, he says, I was looking at my notes and noticed MCAI standards for conforming mortgages tightened in the report that was published yesterday. We now have higher mortgage cost and tighter mortgage availability. How do you think this translates to the local market? He's in the local market. So local market, I mean, in the tightening, it's so depending on what's happening on the back end with uh, the government's algorithms as far as what tightening actually means. I mean, these are super fractional. So um, someone that on the lower end of the credit uh, spectrum may not be getting good findings and may be forced into a government product or into a lower price point. Um, That's probably the biggest impact it's going to have anywhere um, because uh, all all these moves are marginal, if that makes sense. So I'm actually just reading um, a housewire um, notification that came through. Fannie Mae net worth doubles to 47 billion, and that's all single family stuff. So, so the the, our, the back to the point about I like just smiling. So that means, but the government stuff actually increased. Yeah. Right, and the private stuff kind of maybe is balanced out a little bit. But I actually before the show, and I think you texted your assistant. How's your week over week applications looking? We are down maybe less than 5% on average. Got it. And so um, that's kind of but, within that, norm. Within norm. I mean, yeah. that could change in the course of a couple of days. Um, so who asked the question? Excuse me. Paul Hendricks. So ex- which Paul. I believe Paul's watching. Paul, if you're watching right now, jump in the mix here and offer some perspective. This guy is a very smart, well-read dude, Paul Hendricks. And I was just, the question was, what is his applications looking like, right? Paul is in finance. He's finance. a money manager. Got it. Got it. He's a money manager. Paul is managing all of that paper net worth um, that everyone just exploded in value over. You're talking about the $47 billion? Yeah, I'm talking about <laughs> um, to have uh, the, the net worth doubling to $47 billion, uh, I still call a, you know, that's a paper tiger, um, you know. That's just just it's kind of like uh why you know that's going to affect everyone over time the government's going to want its 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 peace and that's going to affect assessments um which you know so if you think about it in a in in real value if you've got without without going in and grabbing this money through a cash out refinance um your property value uh goes up 30 40 percent and then Uncle Sam says, well, I want my piece. So then all of a sudden your assessment goes up 10 to 20%. 
uh, and then your taxes due, and you're already in a higher inflation environment. Oh, I'm going. I mean, this is you know. I, again, I think that's awesome, and it gives people some access to some cash should they need it. But the big picture is, you know, I don't. I don't think it's. I don't think it's that good of a thing. People who watched the show yesterday watched my head explode live as as I had a, a, a fair, an affordable housing deal falling apart over tax increases because the new buyer couldn't afford it any longer. So we saved it, thank God. But uh, it, it, it impacts it impacts people. I th my takeaway from this, and I haven't read the article. Literally, it came in at yesterday afternoon. I have a chance to read it. You know, it seems to be focusing a lot on single family, and if you know. The market is moving, right? The people, yeah. are, people are buying homes, and so you know, you know, the fact that if if you're in agreement of of paper money, not paper money, the bottom line is things are trading, homes are trading back and forth on that end of it, which I think leads a little bit into you asked me a question yesterday. If they don't have anybody else on the feed, no, keep going. We and, do, but I want to finish your thought. Yeah, so uh, asked me a question yesterday about. Um, uh, uh, activity, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, inventory. What do we look like? Um, it looks like we've got a spread of every piece of the area. Right in front of me. Right in front of us. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, look, I, I, I just took a quick snapshot on what was available in the car footprint for the last seven days. So we're starting to tick up a little bit, and, and you'll start seeing that on Facebook. A shout-out to uh, Maggie Gunnels, if you can tag her on that. They, they, they've got a, a couple of coming soons that they put out there, and um, I've got in front of me everything from Stanton, Buckingham, Waynesboro, Augusta, Louisa, Nelson, Green, Fulvana, Charlottesville, and Albemarle County, and, and I was looking at numbers this morning, and I'm starting to see, these are only actives, I'm starting to see in each jurisdiction four, six, eight coming soons, which is kind of what we've been predicting, that the spring market was kind of kind of take pick up a little bit. Yeah, we had the drag of January with all the snow. Um, yeah, power being out, that definitely held people back. There's no doubt about it. So Stanton has 30 active on that end of it, and one, two, three, a four coming soons, which, which really wasn't there a while ago. Buckingham has eight. Which is really interesting, um, and they ranging from 120,000 active to 839. Which I have not looked into these units, but um, you know they're ranging from 1,000 to 4,000 square feet. That, that's a that's a that's a big number for Buckingham County. That's a huge yeah, number for Buckingham County. 800 grand. The uh, the increase in assessments and potential tax tax rate increases are tailwinds for Buckingham County. And, and momentum drivers for Buckingham County. Maybe the last truly affordable, especially for um, people that are in the first time home market, um, pocket of real estate is Buckingham County. So I'm gonna contradict that a little bit. So what you got, Louisa? No, 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 I'm looking, I'm looking at eight in Buckingham County and only three that are available on the market right now between 120 and 249. So there's 120, 219, and after that it jumps to 425. 425. What's the, 420, the 425, though, is going to come with a, a, put, a pretty large chunk of land, though. Uh, hold on a second. I 425 in Buckingham. I guarantee you that's 10-plus acres associated with that property. So, of course, the of course the piece of paper that I printed does not have the acreage Let on it. Let me see if I can find that on the MLS. Uh, so You've got to think, though, that. Yeah. I mean, uh, could could be. I will tell you, I tell you, I did print the square footage of it. That's 2,600 square feet. Let's see if I can uh, find that. Scott Morris, jump in here anywhere you want to go. And then I'll get these uh, macro data questions that are coming in from some cool. of these finance guys. Cool. So I've seen uh, a lot, you know, just private groups, that sort of thing. Uh, you, know, ex you know, how do you feel about uh, uh, inventory? And I go back to the fact that we are not in the same situation a lot of people across the country are. We are not seeing, you know, uh, an entire neighborhood purchased by BlackRock. Um, so mm -hmm. while we have you know, less than what we've had in the past, 33% um, less according to CAR, I believe, uh, from a year ago. Uh, we're, I think as we get into spring and people become more comfortable with the world that we live in, you're gonna see more stuff coming on market and p making the regular human decisions that they, you know, are prone to make, which is, um, I'd like something bigger, I'd like something newer, My, I'm having another baby, like all the things that drive those types of decisions. Well said. Well said. Buckingham County, is it uh, 1771 Dixie Hill Road, 425K ask? You're that's, asking about? That's, that's exactly right. Uh, 1771 Dixie Hill Road, drum roll please, 
22.9 acres Makes associated sense. with that piece of property. That's, it, I mean, it's the land. It's been on the market for 50 days. Motivated sellers, significant price drop, 22 acres. I mean, that's like a Scott Morris farm out in That Colorado, is, right? that is. Scott go get yourself some chickens. Let's go. <laughs> Scott Morris. It looks like my, our, our homie Scott Morris got a fresh cut as well. He's looking. He's it did. Looking I was, so the girl that cuts my hair, like, she moves salons. And, uh, I, you know, I... I was like, it was getting bad. It was getting bad. We were getting uh, to the point where something had to be done. So I texted her, and she's like, just get in here, and I'll make sure it happens. I will. And, and looking, uh, well, she did a good job. And look at on the uh, MLS over here, Q Smith, 219K and 249K in Buckingham. I mean, you can't find these houses in perhaps any other county. What's the, what's the acreages with those? You know, the 219K, um, 166 Arvon Road. That's it. You're looking at uh, 2.82. That sounds okay. about right. Yeah, that sounds it's about fantastic. Right. Yeah, sounds for 219,000, right. that's a first time home waiting to happen. Then there's a 249k. And I bet you that's a couple acres. 2231 right? Constitution Route, 1,400 square feet, three bedroom, two bath. I mean, if this is in in Lake Monticello, this is trading with the three, with three plus with yeah. three in front, in front of, it. of it. This number uh, and one acre plus. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you got to drive a little bit more. Yeah, so, so, so the 120 to the to 249, to, to your point, is probably the couple-acre typical traditional two-acre subdivision, that kind of thing, unless it's got central water and sewer, which Buckingham doesn't have a lot of that. Right. So it's well and And also you got to be worried about broadband. You definitely need to be worried about broadband. But I think that, I think the takeaway from this, even if we're saying the affordability – Right, the housing affordability, not affordable housing, but the housing affordability is in Buckingham. For all intents and purposes, you only have three in Buckingham that's under under two fifty. What do we expect is going to happen over the next couple of years in Buckingham County? Maybe a little uh, anthropology assessment here. There's already been some builders who've uh, gone in and purchased some 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 land, busted into some lots, and are building some. Uh, we'll call affordable housing thing more affordable than certainly what you'd see. So it's not an affordable housing thing. It's the the the, the housing that's more affordable. Well, the land is cheaper. The development yeah. costs are cheaper, right? The construction costs are cheaper. Therefore, the home is more cost effective on on that on that end of it. But yeah, I mean, I I was surprised to see that. I expected to see a bigger number. Now, in fairness. Our car doesn't capture all of Buckingham, so this is Buckingham that is close to Scottsville in that area. You know, it doesn't cover the other end. I think that's in a different... There's like a whole national park out there, so you can get into some super rural Buckingham um, area, which is probably even more affordable. Have you gallivanted uh, in Buckingham? I've gallivanted. Well? I, yeah, I grew okay. up in uh, Columbia, which is like the far corner of Virginia where it intersects with... We're still uh, calling it gallivanting? Columbia, yeah. I like the kind of uh, terminology. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, so Gallivanting Scott Mortgage Morris. That's right. I love it. That's right. I love it. Um, so this has come in, and this is a uh, so this is a macro data that people want your take on. The average contract interest rate for a thirty-year fixed rate mortgage with conforming loan balances increased to four point oh five percent. He follows by saying the average size of a new mortgage just set a new record as home prices continue to climb. Please ask Scott what his takes on new mortgages setting new records with home prices continuing to climb. Four plus interest rates, 4.05 to be exact. And the average purchase loan size was a record $453,000. His take on any of that stuff. I mean, that's kind of been the theme for uh, what we've been talking about for the last uh, few months. Uh, we're continuing to see an appreciation in value, and we knew mortgage rates were going up. And did we think that that was going to slow anything down? And the, it's been like a hard stop? No. Um, we've also, on a national level, started to see uh, some wage increases as well, which will help support this. But, you know, fundamentally, this comes back to uh, sticky inflation um, because ultimately wage increases driven up are going to increase the, the cost of everything around you. Um, rents are also going to go up, which goes back to why making the purchase makes so much sense. Uh, as you know, de this needs to filter in more to, uh, to, 
to government payroll, um, and I don't mean people who are getting paid uh, as contractors in the, the vicinity of D.C., Fairfax, and Loudoun County. I mean uh, small municipalities paying police firefighters more and that filtering into what the university does for nurses, et cetera. Um, those are the people who really need to, uh, you know, cost-effective housing in, in our social neighborhoods. And uh, how do we make that work is probably the, the biggest thing. I was stopped, I'll get out of your way on this, I was stopped by a lieutenant on the downtown mall, um, police force, um, all good. <laughs> Don't be smiling. I saw, it's all good. Uh, listens to the shows. Oh, really? And oh, said, yeah. um, we, we, a lot of us do, and thank you for backing the boys in blue. Okay. And said, please highlight for the community that the people that are serving and protecting the community cannot afford to live in the community that they're protecting and serving. And as we do not have take-home vehicles like we once did because of rollbacks on budget, we're now having to drive there in our own personal vehicles, which is eating into the little money that we're making. So you asked me why I work so hard for affordable housing or housing affordability. That's exactly the reason I do. So, so that people that serve and protect us and teachers and nurses have a place to live a little closer to, to their workplace. And the thing that blew up yesterday was actually in the service related. I won't tell specific, but this individual was in that line of work. So I'm honored to be able to make that work and, and close on, on that end of it. But as a follow up on that, as a follow up of our yesterday's show, I actually had a phone call off of what Scott just said from somebody uh, who watched the show who wanted to um, say, well, maybe I won't buy now, I'll rent because of inflation. And I had to explain to this uh, individual, what do you think is going to happen to your rent? Because inflation is going to impact the landlord and he's just or she is going to pass that along and so you know you're 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 going to be paying for inflation the, the interest rate on those uh on those rental payments is 100 percent. that's yeah. exactly right well said very well said um finish your thought there keith and then i got follow-up no you. he just blew my mind with 100 percent because i've never thought about it that way but that's 100 percent 100 percent on that end of it but i just wanted to you know just to echo off of what the police officer said to you and and what you said is you know the, you know owning is is the be in my opinion the best path to hedge against inflation there's some additional costs like taxes which we talked about yesterday and and insurances will change it but at the end of the day uh you know ownership even at Four percent is a lot better than getting a seven percent increase um, next year in rent. Yeah. Zach Zach Morris giving us some props. No, not the guy from Saved by the Bell, but I appear it appears to be kin to Scott Morris over here. Not kin, not kin. I mean, this is like the whole like Fluvanna Green Scottsville. Like there's so the Morrises and or Shiflets. There's okay. a lot of them. There's a lot of there them. are a lot of Morrises. Zachary Morris says, what up, what up, what up, uh, on Scott's page right now. And if you have uh, questions to put on air, please do. Bill says this, back in the day, it was cruising the Biff. Biff Burger was located where the KFC is at Emmett and Angus Road. He's talking about uh, uh, gallivanting Scott Mortgage Morris there. Yeah. Um, and he's reminiscing about gallivanting in his own right, Bill. Um, so more questions coming in on the macro data. Obviously, this came out this morning. Applications to refinance a home loan are now less than half the volume of a year ago. Sure. I mean, and we, and we talked about that was coming. I mean, m people who could have, for the most part, did take advantage of that uh, refinance, uh, the, the super low rates. Now that we're you know, discussing a 4% of 30-year fixed mortgage, as we go back up, they're not going to refi typically um, into a higher rate unless they want to get into some of this equity that uh, exists in the property to go solve, you know, whatever financial problems or, you know, they may need the money for in their life. Now, at the same time, you can't look at the refinancing strictly, especially if you need the cash from a rate perspective. You look at it from a cash flow perspective. If you've got existing unsecured debt that is just burning you up from uh, a t an 18% interest rate on credit cards and you can go in, grab the cash and refinance at four, pay those things off and stay out of trouble with it, that's probably a pretty effective move and on if, your part. And if you've been used to paying this amount of money, carve off a little bit of that, pay it to your principal, Absolutely. right? And you're actually only paying yourself instead of paying the credit card company. 100%. Um, this question from Gretchen, what do you guys think Buckingham will turn into maybe another county in the area that it's going to become where this county, county currently is today? That's a good question. I think maybe more like what Fluvanna was 
40 years ago. Um, and by that, I mean, it, even if you're going to go out that far, um, it needs some sort of sustainable um, commerce to drive that. So uh, the closer you are to Scottsville, the more of that you'll see. But do they have, a, is there a grocery store? Uh, there's a, there's a great value, I think, in Scottsville still. It used to be an IGA. So depending on how far back you want to go on, on that. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I think that's a key piece in to supporting, uh, the more rural areas. Yeah. I, um, <clears throat> you know, we, I, you grew up in rural. I've been living in rural for 35 years. Um, yeah, I, I, I just I think Buckingham will, will will take a little bit of the relief or a little bit of of the of the affordable buyer or the the the, the housing affordability. I, I just don't see the volume going out that way. I think there's just a bunch of of the, it's the drive out there. They don't have if they can solve the internet issue if they can pull up huge yeah if they like can, jesse rutherford and nelson county yeah exactly right as nelson county has done that'll change it because then you can start getting some of the work at home or some of the the zoom town kind of stuff but if there's they're on dial some parts of that county's on dial up literally dial up so i think i think some infrastructure investment needs to get made and i'm not i don't i, I mean i can talk a little bit about albemarle and green and all that kind of great stuff uh, but as far as buckingham county goes i think if you get that going you'll start seeing some more uh she uh, follows up for keith and keep the the reel going and we'll get um scott and and um keith's take on this she follows up by saying but it could be forced to evolve quickly because we can't afford to buy in the counties you guys are talking specifically almaro charlottesville and fluvanna any yeah. longer yeah yeah so you know she's spot on i mean that's what's going to go out there but literally if we define 250 and under as as affordable, just to pick a number, there's only three available, right? That, that's the pool, as we said, is pretty deep. So, uh, you know, it's some, I'll have to dig a little bit more into it. This is a pretty quick synopsis from this morning uh, on, on it, but, you know, it's a big jump. It's a jump from, and it's acreage, as you said, but it's a jump from 249 to 425. That, that's a couple of hundred, almost a couple of hundred grand jump. That, that's a big jump. In that end of it. Your thoughts on this, Scott? Um, yeah, I mean, I don't. As far as it being forced to happen, I mean, that's going to rely more on building material cost, um, labor cost for builders, what it's going to take to get uh, any number of units um, divided and approved through Buckingham County uh, to to keep that price point at that number that low. Uh, I don't know. That's We'll, we'll, I think, to be determined. I think that's a bigger comment than... So, than so I'm going to start digging through some of, this, some of this data here to jump in a little bit more as, as we're doing this live. But um, what is your average sales price these days? Do you know what your average uh, amount? $330,000. It's around three thirty, right? So, so you know, I'm, I'm going to pick two fifty as a number, right, as, as in a housing affordability. So, so actually in Waynesboro, you've, this, the city of Waynesboro... I haven't dig into it, but you got eleven available. That's under two fifty. What's the drive from Charlottesville to Waynesboro, time-wise, and Charlottesville to Buckingham? Are they synonymous? They're pretty close, depending on uh, where the like twenty-nine North is probably different than uh, closer to the. Let's say use the university. Um, yeah, university is a good call. Uh, you're probably thirty thirty-five minutes both ways would be my. But it's a different drive. Yeah, I mean, and that that's important. Well, that's true because Route 20 becomes an absolute like 53, 53 to Charlottesville, and 20 to Charlottesville can get super congested, crazy, very town. dicey. Yeah, uh, depending on weather and you know. Is, same, with, same with the interstate. There's a as a guy who grew up in tr real traffic. Um, there's a difference of hopping on 64, assuming you don't have an accident, because th that can happen in either case, and just driving straight at 60, 70 miles an hour versus... I've seen a lot of people that drive 53 in Route 20. I'm not saying that, you know, <laughs> 60 miles an hour is, is completely off limits there. Um, you were behind me, were you? <laughs> Zach Morris says 30 minutes to Waynesboro, depending on traffic. Yeah, I would agree, yeah. I can get from, I can get from Lake Monticello to Fishersville in 45 minutes. Yeah. In 45 minutes. 
So you're more bullish on Waynesboro, then? Well, I, I, it's just from a travel perspective. It's a little easy to get there. And, and there's already more rooftops. And there's more inventory. There's, yeah. So we yeah. got... And there's more amenities. Yeah. And yeah. more retail and restaurants. So Augusta has 15 under that price point. Now, Augusta, you can get... You get out into Churchville and those areas, you can get into the super rural there as well. So uh, it's... it's You've got access to some amenities, and you're close to a lot of things, and uh, you're probably, what, another 30 minutes from Harrisonburg at that point. Uh, if you've got, you know, kids going to JMU, that sort of thing. Um, but uh, definitely, you can get into the super rural areas out there as well. So, so just to do some quick looking at all these spreadsheets I have, Augusta, Waynesboro, and Stanton, you know, under, I just picked 300, I'm changing numbers around a little bit just to kind of see what's available. There's 40 of homes or 40 something available uh, under 300,000 in that area versus three in Buckingham. What do you make of that? You know, I think that's where the market is going. I think that's going. I think that, that drive makes a, huge, makes a huge difference. Waynesboro has internet. It has services, right? Um, it has easy connectivity. Um, there's actually a, um, a, a joint. We learned that when, when joint was here. There's a connector bus. That Before can... COVID, the um, university had a, a um, ride share at, with Buckingham. Correct. And I think if I remember our conversation, I think there is some ride share going on over there, but there's an actual connector bus now going from the other side, and other side of the mount, mountain um, to do that because so much of the university was working, was living in Buckingham. Excuse me, sir. A lot of the university, um, not a lot, but a fair chunk of university employees were actually living in Buckingham County. So yeah. That's why they did the ride share. Now it evaporated when COVID hit because of the unsafe nature of rideshare. Um, so maybe that comes back on, on market. Scott, we're not gonna go down that way. Um, bad thing to consider about Waynesboro is the mountain very hazardous during the winter time and heavy fall can be very dicey at times. That's from Zach Morse right there. I like the contributions from you, sir. Um, the, the, feed is, the feed is blowing up right here. This question um, about Keith's client from yesterday who lost closing due to higher assessments. Can you bring that up with Scott? Um, and also we're getting this question that's coming in from Christopher. Does um, your mortgage um, expert expect refis to drop and be less of his business with rates going up? First, why don't we go with the first topic? And the topic yesterday was he had a potential buyer almost lose a deal because of the assessment increase. And I guess we could go down the road of the tax rate increase that's on the near horizon. Yeah, so, so first time home buyer, mm -hmm. just in your uh, thinking, um, you know, typically is razor thin, right? Regardless if it's an affordable housing land trust buyer or, or a typical first time, first time home buyer. And what had, what had happened was um, the new tax assessment came out in Albemarle County and it increased their total number by 800 bucks. Which, By eight hundred dollars annually, or an, annually, okay, annually, um, and it and it kicked them out of the program mm -hmm. that we were in. So, uh, so what is that? Sixty five bucks a month. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's sixty seven. That's still a that, lot. Yeah, that yeah. Uh, depending on because you got to. I mean, what whatever the income is. Uh, if that's they were great, already, that's a great track. Why, why did that kick because out? Because if they were already, so this is not the same as. Uh, the, the tightening of credit standards due to the, the MCAI, but if we're going to talk about how the government's running the algorithms for Fannie and Freddie, um, one, it may have been something as simple as that $65 pushed them from 56.99 to 57x um, or 58x total debt to income and to where it, they, it's just in a, a range that will not qualify. Um, and that's the most common way for something like that to affect a process. So the way we fixed that is ult ultimately we were able to communicate a little bit with the county and help with the assessment, but we needed to reduce the price by ten grand. That's one thing. Um, I, I, you know, I, the first thing I'm going to do on my end uh, is call my insurance person and go, "Hey, uh, got got one for you. 
how can we reduce their annual premium on their homeowner's insurance and, and what else and then and just start you know going you know line what? by line through everything to I should have see called you I didn't do. think about that as a potential it's a great idea potential yeah. solution to that's that. a great idea so are we not fearful that we're going to have more situations like that if if the tax rate and the assessments continue to do what they're doing, I mean, we're going to have those situations. Well, it's just that's coinciding with uh, rising rates. We're going to have a smaller pool of buyer borrowers as we go forward. Um, but I, as we've discussed on the show, you know what? How with inventory being what it is at the moment, how drastic? The only thing to slow the. Uh, rocket ship of value is that for there to be less people trying to buy these homes which will put days on market longer which will put eventually a more normal market but, but let's talk about value because we're not talking in this case we're not talking about market value we're talking about tax assessed value which is substantially lower correct but that's what i talked value. about in the beginning of the show when we talk about uh whatever statistic you have over there saying that uh the net worth of everyone in america has virtually doubled due to the value of their homes increasing um and me saying that eventually the government is coming to get that money i think i didn't say that i think Fanny Mae. Fanny Mae. Fanny Mae. I referenced the piece of paper that you brought in sitting on the thing there. Scott Morgan's Morris, don't get me into trouble. <laughs> no, 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 not at all. It's the paper he's got there. Um, I tend to do enough of that on my own. Thank you very much. <laughs> so this is a hot topic on the feed, and we'll get to uh, we'll get to the other topics here. Almoro County is going to probably follow suit with an assessment or tax rate increase, um, as the city of Charlottesville does its tax rate increase sure. and has that 12% assessment year over year um, uptick. So the question is, are we as, and I'm gonna paraphrase this from her, are, are we as first time home buyers just gonna feel the brunt of this more so than those that already have houses or, or are deeper along in their lives? I mean, I, I hate to say the answer is yes. No, maybe yes, maybe no yes. I mean, we, we have an example of my parents, right? Their their tax assessment is going up. They're on a fixed income, right? Their income is not growing to just ten percent uh, inflation. Um, you know, so they the retired demographic fixed income retirees are almost in the same category as the first time home buyers. It, for two reasons, what we just outlined, and also they want the same thing when they're buying. So they're competing against each other as far as product product is concerned. But you're 100 percent right. The bookends of both sides, you know, um, are are feeling the impact on this. Let's also take a, a step back from this and pretend that the last two years didn't happen. So when we were at a conventional 30 year fixed mortgage um, that was four and a quarter in 2018 um 2019 january 2019 we weren't having this conversation no but and i'll play devil's advocate for the sake of the talk show the price points were not what they are today first 2018 2019 okay and also devil's advocate with you the tax exposure was not what they are today so i think scott's point is and inflation wasn't what it is. Now, that That's is a bell the that gets rung due to pumping that. I mean, this is like yeah, a whole a ton of free money. To yeah, everybody. that's like a whole other show. Yeah. Um, but you put that much money in the system, you're going to get the problem that exists. And that's um, what Xavier Erpy was highlighting yesterday. Yeah. So when the last time the interest rates were at 5% was somewhere between 18 and 19, looking at the chart that I have in front of me, inflation at that point was zero. Yeah, or it was less. It was two percent at the time, yeah. or it was chasing. It was just under two percent. Yeah. So, so when when the the impact of that and the CPI on my parents and on the first time home buyer is impactful, right on on that end of it. But you know, at at, at that point in time when we were in two thousand and eighteen and nineteen, you were still making deals. I was still selling houses. I mean, the market was was moving along. I think the I think the, the follow up on what Jerry just said. This conversation we're having about tax rate increase happens every year. Yeah. It's right. just this year, because of the two years that you want us to forget about, and has impacted that. Well, Absolutely. And, go ahead, Scott. Well, and the, and the other side of that also is, as long as we don't get 
governments paying independents to come through, which they're going to have to do, but as long as it doesn't get absurd, like during uh, just like the 08 time frame where you saw some of the, these assessments doubling in value, that's, that's just, that's when you go and you, as a collective group of humans to your local governance and say, whoa, 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 um, you're we're gonna you're gonna pay for another round of this and get an average because there's no way that these properties just. And that's what we're trying to do here. Is Neil watching? I mean, we have one of the loudest voices we have with this network. Neil Williams said, "If you're watching, please um, give us a poke or let us know." And to Scott's point, um, historically, African American community, tenth and page in the city of Charlottesville, assessments jumped twenty five percent year over year. And a lot of the families um, in 10th and Page are fixed budgeted. And yeah. that is a byproduct, and we love Dairy Market, love Dairy Central, love sure. them. Sure. But Dairy Market and Dairy Central certainly influence the 25% assessment. 100%, but update. this goes back to like my age old, like this is, and I don't want to go too far down this view on government of let me give you a, a big hug while I stab you in the back. Like they it say all the right things, but you know, ultimately, you know, th th this is. This is the reason why part of something so everybody can understand. There's a reason why I ask for a shout out to, to, to Neil because I've had a chance to, to actually I'll, fact, I'll fact right check now. this number, and, and Neil will know. Um, it's much like the, the tax assessment, so just to get this out there, the tax assessment required by, this, by the state is much like the comprehensive plan. I think, it's, I think you have to do it every five years. So some jurisdictions, like our jurisdiction, Fulvana County, has, didn't do it for years. So what happened was is the market has changed substantially in five years. So what it was five years ago um, and, and what it was now um, is a huge jump. So most jurisdictions now are going into this yearly or bi-yearly thing, but for quite a while it was every five years. So it was kind of didn't hit you until a five-year period of time. And I may be wrong. It may be longer than five years. It may be less than five years. But some jurisdictions don't do this every year. Well, well, how about this from Spencer? And Paul McCarter, we'll get to your comment here in a matter of moments, The of Avenue Realty. Very uh, free market, small government. Paul, would you characterize yourself as libertarian-esque? Uh, let us know what your thoughts are on that. But Spencer says this. Maybe you guys are just looking at it the wrong way. Increased assessments means people have more worth, means the jurisdiction has more money to run, means the economy is strong in Charlottesville. Why not look at it that way? So all that is ex is absolutely true, right? And and we're just fearful for of a the certain. It's true for yeah. a certain part of the population. Exactly. But I, exactly. it's important to understand. It's it's true if we don't want diversity in wealth and, um, and um, you know, racial diversity. It, yeah, 100%. It's true if you're okay going, all, the, all these things that we say and do to help uh, certain parts of the community only matter um, when we're saying them, not through our actual actions and how much we charge them to, to live here. And Paul McCarter literally just said, assessments and tax rates are another example of the city and county saying they want affordable housing while every decision they make increases yeah, the cost that, of housing. Yeah, that's, that's my opinion. I, well, I'm, they're buzzwords. Yeah, yes. They're, they're marketing buzzwords to win elections. He's going to say, no way, Jose, because he's, he's been in the space for 30 years, and but he literally fun. has had successful championing efforts of affordable housing. We, we, were, a, we were able you have. to make it actually happen. Yeah. But, but it, the brain damage is a little and bit more than I can The difficulty in getting that done, yeah. and then on top of that, um, the fractionality of... Uh, it's not scalable. So yes. It, so you're, you're not protecting people who already have existing properties. No. You're creating 50 units um, uh, to try to help a population of probably yeah. 20,000. Yeah, try like four units. Okay. Instead of 50 units. Yeah. So, um, look, we, we were, um, not to make this up, this is about, about you and, 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 and all this <laughs> stuff, but. But this is important topics, and we already got good content for the Sizzle Reels, and he has. 
great ammunition and good stuff to say that I think is like, mm -hmm. I mean, like he just said, Paul but, just said, libertarian leading independent. Mm -hmm. I mean, he is like that. I'm like that. It's like the party of common sense. Yeah. Get so, out of our own <clears throat> way. Is that right? Uh, yes, but I try not to go too far down that road. Yeah. Um, I mean, we're it, running businesses, I get it. Yeah. 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 So, and, and never point a finger at somebody else. We try to figure out a, a solution at that. So to talk about solutions, you know, I, we were able with the land trust for $180,000 to put nine families in, produce $2.2 million. And that was only because of relationships. It was only because I was able to put Al Mark County in a room, land trust in a room, Stanley Martin in a room, and say, how are we going to do this? And everybody ponied up to make it happen. So it's nine, it's not 900, right? Which is what, what is needed. It can be done, uh, but as the conversation I had with two city councils yesterday, turn my red tape into green tape, and we can get this happening. Two years on an awning is wrong, right? That yeah, dude, that is wrong. Walk out the Mackin building, and when you head to that, did you drive the big truck or the uh, gas efficient? The uh, gas efficient car. Okay, the gas efficient car. When you walk to the gas efficient car, look at the new awning, two, 25 months. City of Charlton, downtown. Hey, I, you know, that and signage are like the Freaking two things that I, you know, I cannot understand. <clears throat> and, and go back to... Did you have to go through the architectural review board and... Yeah. Historic district, yep. downtown, changing the streetscape. Two years. Not that you shouldn't have to do all that, from my perspective, but that's a couple of month review, not a 24 month review. And the interesting thing is, it's like, and you and I were talking about this with the ERPIs yesterday, like the awning has a cost... And that cost two years ago versus that cost today is very different because of cost of goods going up, inflation. Labor. Labor, yeah. Goods, and you labor. And did, you didn't calculate your time into yeah. that. Right, right. <clears throat> um, and, uh, and the awning also has a cost with architects spending the time at hourly rates that are justified their experience. Sure. But, but hourly rates, nevertheless, of going through the bureaucratic process that made it even more expensive. So this $800 yesterday we had eight people working on this for four hours yes yesterday eight different people from lawyers to to all kinds across the board do you think it cost us more than 800 bucks to get ahead and, and manage that it sure as hell did every time so you know just because of that and and i think at the back end of it it's going to be a snafu that i think somebody in albemarle county miss misquoted the, the assessed value, which I'm going to fight after we close, because if we don't close it, this poor family will be homeless if I don't sign a piece of paper at 12.30 today to go ahead and do it. And we'll go back and fight the county, which I've already given them a heads up that it's coming um, to go ahead and change this, because what they just arbitrarily picked a number. Just arbitrarily picked the number. Well, is it because the assessment office is so, so this is new construction, so they arbitrarily picked a number. Okay. It last they, year they don't use comps for that. Last year it was a lot. Now it's a home. Historically, the way this works, and I think we'll win this. Historically, whatever the contract price is, that's usually what they set the tax assessed value in new construction. That's how it's supposed to work. So a lot of times it comes in below that. So one of the things that I typically do is I will coach borrowers that look, I'm going to set this uh, at the contract price. Um, but I'm going to discuss with title as well and kind of get a view on some other like properties. And a lot of times it's 80% of contract. So these are leasehold purchases, right? So yep. this is a very unique, unique nope, product. I understand. In fact, I, I kick, I sent all of someone else's information over for one of the ones on Spring Hill to help them get that done. Thank, thank you. Um, uh, <clears throat> but, and that means you're a class act guy. Yeah, he is class. The, um, but that's what happened. The, the loan officer on the other side on this, which is Fulton Bank, who's doing this portfolio money from that, set the tax assessed value based on the purchase price. It came out substantially higher. All right, that is crazy. Right, so that's yeah. that's the problem. That's the fight. But we're we're all ponying up ten grand to make this thing work, and then we have to go back and fight the county for it. Um, this comment from uh, Nicholas: It's great to have the value of a home go up. It's investing. It's a hedge, but the problem is that the taxation on that asset is what drives people out. It would create generational wealth for minorities if the government didn't tax those properties. That's the crux of the issue. 
a Nicholas, the Italian cookies, did not make it home. I ate them on the way home. Yeah, they were delicious. <laughs> they were absolutely delicious. Thoughts on that topic? The, it's, it's I think a, that's the I think that's what we're you know we've been getting at on, from the moment it came up. Um, that's that's how you that's what gentrifies neighborhoods, or at least that's the beginning. Um, how about this from Avenue Realty's Paul McCarter? A few units being affordable by removing some of the ownership of the property is not addressing affordable housing. How about a neighborhood having to have 25% green space, which means the other lots have to be more expensive to offset 25% being dormant, or VDOT not taking on new roads, which forces HOA to collect for them, which count as part of the mortgage payment. That means newer neighborhoods have to pay for their own roads, plus taxes for all the other old neighborhood roads. So Paul, it makes newer neighborhoods cost more, even if they are the same price. So Paul, when I speak about turning red tape into green tape, it's all these things. Yeah, um, or VDOT uh, not allowing uh, the current, having to upgrade the entrance of a road to adjust for two lots from, for the current standard, so you're turning a project, you, you know, you're adding twenty-five to fifty thousand dollars for an entrance into something that, uh, you know, it, there's tons of these little minutia things uh, to meet uh, an existing government standard. That well, so, so may let's or may be a little specific. We're, we're talking about Albemarle and Charlottesville, but when you start going out to Augusta County and Buckingham County, and and Fulvan is kind of changing its mindset a little bit on things like this by the rejection of a couple of. Uh, developments. I think there's another one's going to get rejected tonight at the Board of Supervisors. Um, you know, these outlining counties where the path is a little easier and the red tape isn't so much there, that is going to probably drive some of the development out that out that, that way as long as they've got that uh, infrastructure, which I'm not talking about roads, I'm talking about... Schools. Well, what I'm really talking about is Wi-Fi, uh, oh. uh, broadband, excuse me, on that end of it. Well, that's in a whole nother, but, you know, and I guess my whole reference to schools is a whole nother example of uh, where these costs come back in the form of taxes. Um, because you put more people somewhere, there's got to be the infrastructure to, to, to support it. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. And but I, I, read, I read a statistic, which I didn't bring with it. The, the average family of children are decreasing year over year, and I'm holding Nelson County. Because nobody can afford to have kids. Yeah, right. Exactly what I, I can tell you in the wow. 80s, nobody could afford to have kids, too. I'm just I, I had a whole conversation <laughs> with Tina Smith about that. <laughs> I mean, how many kids did uh, your mom have? Five. Right. Yeah, the, the answer is, is we started with you and we figured we'd screw it up. We just keep on going until, <laughs> until we got it right. And after five, they said, yeah. Is Scott Morris having any more kids? Uh, no, sir. Dr. No. Morris? No, no, no. We're good. We are. It's got three. It's three, right? Yeah, it's twin three. Got God three. bless you. Got one. Uh, yeah, God bless you. Three under uh, five? Yeah, yeah, the girls will turn four this summer. Three. and uh, Freaking superstars. But Over Nelson here. County's student population is continually to decrease. Well, what do you attribute that to? I have some ideas on that. It's my age. Yeah, retirees moving into it's Nelson. The, it's the average age. So there's a flip side to that, right? So so this whole conversation we had with Chris Fairchild and Tony O'Brien and about a project that got rejected that was going to provide housing at the 250, 350 point, which more than likely would have brought in families, right, is now going to be 50, 75, 100, depending on the growth of the project, by right of 400 to 500,000, guess what they're going to be? They're going to be me. They're going to be, you know, retirees. I mean, it's happened out there. The, the Island Hill, 90% of the sales out there are all retirees. So that, you know, maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but there's going to be a start, a decreasing of children in the school system. You know, and I'm sure somebody who's way smarter than me is projecting that out. And I'm curious as the school population decreases in public schools, they get less funding from the state. Well, that's exactly what happens. Yeah, and as they get less funding for the state, I wonder how that's going to impact those school systems. Well, that's like Nelson. Well, but and the then are you going to see the kids from resource families in Nelson as the schools get less funding from the state start going to St. Anne's? So the great thing about Nelson, uh, the great thing about Nelson County and. Jesse Rutherford, and if you can tag him, we, he likes it when we talk about him. <laughs> um, he does. He does. Imagine he, that. Imagine that huh? <laughs> um, but the good thing about that is it has a, an excess revenue because it's pulling in a certain amount of revenue, so it's decreasing its number from the state. So, uh, Neil, 
uh, uh, Ned Galloway tried to explain this the other day. It, it, it's it's based on student population, and the population of the of the county is the amount of money that it comes from the state, and it's anywhere between sixty to eighty percent, depending on the of the total budget. Nelson County is fortunate because because Jesse told us this. It's moving money from an account that it has to fund the shortfall. It has that ability to do that. This question um, might be is going to be a tough one to answer. Um, any idea what the ratio of buyers versus sellers would be? And specifically, well, let me backtrack. Current homeowners that are being priced out of the market due to inflation and tax increases. Any idea or where we could find the data of how many this people applies to, families this applies to? I don't know if I would have access to that data, would you? I have no idea. Yeah, where would that data come from? How would we know? Who is being forced to sell their home? I mean, I guess you forced can find to sell their home. Is that what we're talking about? I mean, that can't afford it. I guess you can find the data associated with the tax relief programs that Charlottesville has, but I don't know if that's public record. Uh, well, I think I, it, it's public record because you can do a FOIA request, Freedom of Information Act request. So someone can FOIA City yeah, of Charlottesville yeah. and say this many homes, and these are the addresses. Yeah. Yeah. They got tax relief? Yeah, so I actually looked that up because that was an avenue I was working for this client yesterday to do that. Um, so uh, the Albemarle County, I think, on the tax relief program, um, did somewhere around 240, 250 folks. They actually have that data. I saw it yesterday. Interesting thing, though. You have to be 65, right? Um, Jesse's watching now. Hello, Jesse Rutherford. Hey, Jesse Rutherford. We're talking about you. He like said, what are. did I do? <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> <laughs> Supervisor Nelson County. Yeah. So, uh, question, because that is a complicated how you would actually get there. What is the, uh, how many people, you're in Fluvanna, what is the, what's the current population? Uh, 27,000. I was literally looking that up this morning for, okay. I'm going to attend a board meeting and talk about this. So, they just built a new high school. Um, $20 million worth of water. That we don't have any water yet. Yeah. Um, just saying. Is there anybody in the feed who could chime in to like what the uh, what the, the the population what the student population is at the high school is now? When I so I graduated in 1997, uh, my graduating class was 140 people. Um, I would be curious to know what the class size is now if we're going through a continuous 20 year 20 plus year growth rate, um, like where that is, if we feel like the future population there or in these areas may be declining. Yeah, I would think the future population of kids in public schools in Fluvanna is going to go up. Okay. And the reason I would think that is because Charlottesville and Almore County has gotten so expensive for young families to buy that they flocked and flooded Lake Monticello. And so do we, those. do we think with the lack of Charlottesville wanting density that Charlottesville schools will continue to decline? Well, we we, we don't know if it's right declining, declining or not. And, and, and somebody, a great question. somebody a great with question. quick fingers can get on the school board's websites and, and kind of take a look <coughs> at something. Because that, all that is public information. That's, that's all out, out there. But and to your stab question or comment earlier, so there has been a stab. Uh, Got it. Not we're not stabbing people. That's not nice. Um, the Covenant School or any of them. Yeah, yeah. Or well, any we of are them. Marines, so Wood, I got a little worried. There Wood, <laughs> Woodbury. Um, yeah. So there has been a a big growth in uh, talented student athletes leaving local county uh, to go to uh, Fork Union Stab. Uh, you know, some of these higher profile would vary for, for, sure. for a long time for sure. um, to the point where, so my dad's been, you know, he, he coached football and uh, participates in uh, officiating track events for the last 40 years. Um, and uh, it, it's been a, a topic of conversation between he and I about the talent pool, why, why certain small localities have a difficult time. And it's because if they, the, the most talent is no longer focus there at the school, they're going to private institutions. Well, well, the price point of the homes drive that a little bit. Well, so and, the, and Jamie Turner, Woodbury Forest, uh, Forest is finest alum watching the program right now. Um, he likes to rep the pep on the feed, and he loves when I make that comment, and he's getting a chuckle right now at his home in Culpepper when I say rep the pep. Um, you get a financial uh, tuition break if you're yeah. a high-performing athlete. And why wouldn't you, if you're a high-performing athlete, 
go to a school that has 100%. fantastic amenities athletically. Yes, and, there, and I'm not criticizing that. I'm just stating that that is already something that's happening um, from a, on, a, on a certain level, which certainly isn't you know driving the uh, you know it, it certainly isn't helping the local schools. I mean, that's like the, the gentrification of high school athletics. It is. That's which is yeah. crazy if you think it about is. it. So, uh, Fulvana County, 39 homes are on the market. That's both Lake Monticello and around. The median list price is 391, 390, 392, 391, 910. Let's call it 392. And do you think uh, 24 months ago we were at 280? So, I'm looking at what's available on the 330 right now, and I'm about eight, and that's in the whole county. Michael Buchensky, uh, First Heritage Mortgages, My Michael Buchensky has this for Scott. I'm coaching the Covenant JV girls basketball team tonight against Stab, so I can report back tomorrow on the talent. <laughs> You'll know. Um, Buchetsky loves basketball, um, and he's going to have the clipboard and the sidelines and the junior varsity uh, basketball nice. Game tonight. Nice. Um, we love when you watch the program right there, Keith. Please finish your thought. I didn't mean to. Uh, no, 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 no. You're good. I, I, I'm, while you guys are talking, I'm just digging through all these spreadsheets that I printed. I printed this morning, and I was just looking at Fulvana County and. Like I said, the median sales price, list price at the moment right now is... Uh, well, and he's a good example because I believe um, that he's in the Western District. And, and from his comment, it looks like they're at the Covenant School. Yeah. And another intriguing aspect of this, I think, to Scott's point, what also expedited that was um, um, how the public schools responded to the pandemic and how some of the public schools didn't have the in-person class where the private schools did. Yeah. So, like, a lot of the parents were like, we want... The, the, nor the learning setting of, of pre-pandemic times. Oh, 100%. I mean, um, I've got uh, a friend of mine who coaches basketball actually out in Buckingham, and it's been an ongoing uh, battle with trying to get back to what his opinion or what you know a lot of people's opinions of things should be um, compared to what some of the local governance, and this is, you know, nationwide, have, have done. The uh, Super Bowl was a great example. I'm not going to Go, keep going down that. Yeah, let's not path. do that. <laughs> J Jamie Turner, to Scott's point, um, Woodbury Forest, at lunch at Woodbury, it was not uncommon to see Mike Lunded, Nick Saban, David Shaw around grounds at yeah, Woodbury Forest. Yeah, recruiting. I mean, that's pretty, I mean, those are heavy hitters right there, um, walking in the grounds of Woodbury. And it's no secret, Jamie Turner, can you offer some perspective here? I think the uh, all-in yearly tuition at Woodbury is like, is it is it north of forty k for borders? I think it's thirty five. Thirty five, yeah. So in the ballpark for yeah, borders, I think. Yeah, so thirty five, Jamie. If you can offer any insight into that, uh, maybe of how that's gone up. So I mean, that is the gentrification of public school sports, right there. That's a hell of a topic. Yeah. To cover on the show, um, Keith. Multiple folks watched yesterday's show that are asking, "Did you save the client deal?" Yeah, we saved it. Yeah, I'm literally. Finishing it up as we speak right now. We saved it. it. It was a matter of bringing an extra ten grand to the table, but we found it and we were able to make it happen. So, um, this question for Scott: How do you factor in um, tax rate increases on mortgage applications that may or may not close at the time of the tax rate increase decision? I'm going to use whatever is existing and talk to the borrowers about the difference because I can't. Title's going to come up with a number um, from the county, and I'm not going to have them paying something more, but I will let them know, hey, be on the lookout that, you know, there are assessments that are going to affect your mortgage payment in the future. And it's not your principal and interest that are increasing, but also keep an eye out in case your home insurance goes out, up. And if it does, then contact me and we'll get you in touch with an agent who can get you, a, you know, another look at another policy. So that's a great point to make. Most people do not know that you can change your insurance company midway through a life of a loan, right? Yeah. You, it's, it, you know, I've had this conversation a hundred times with folks that, well, I can't change it. I said, no, you can't. You just, let's go out and shop it. Here's a trusted advisor. Let's go out and shop it and save yourself a hundred bucks a month or 50 bucks a month. You know, and that's what you have to do when you have to get a little creative on that. And maybe you have to increase your deductible or, or whatever it is to kind of, to kind of get, get you there. Are I you think ready this, for a number that's going to scare the hell out of you? I mean, the Woodbury number. Okay. Yeah. 60 grand. This is a reflection of waiting lists and supply and demand in COVID. Um, this is from Jamie Turner, graduate of Jamie Turner, of uh, Woodbury Forest. He says, when I was there, it was 35K. 
and then he just checked the current tuition at Woodbury Forest, sixty two thousand yeah. two hundred dollars a year, yeah. and he responds. <laughs> May have to send my kids to the pep. <laughs> That's what he says, literally. Yeah. 62,000. And then he's including a link. Jamie Turner, you're making us better today like you always do. I love the folks. Hey, that if he's pulling team. that up, what, he sent me the link. What is, uh, what's the, uh, there's an elementary school. There. Good night. The true cost. Here's the link. Thank you, Jamie Turner. The true cost, and, and then finish your thought. The true cost to send a boy through Woodbury for a year is calculated at approximately eighty-eight thousand two forty-five. Our current tuition, room, and board is sixty-two thousand two hundred. That means that even families who pay full tuition receive a subsidy of almost twenty-six thousand one hundred annually toward their son's education. That's a little smoke and mirrors right there. Sure, that's sure. a little smoke. Well, and mirrors. they also have. Did you hear that? Uh, that's called brand management, right there. Uh, I don't know whoever wrote that needs to get a real estate license. <laughs> My brain's not working at the moment, but what's a... Uh, Every so, once in a while, I can... That was hilarious. Moment. What's a college that... So they've got the, the investment that they hold, like their their big pool of money, their... Uh, endowment? Yeah, so the yeah. endowment at Woodbury is like off the charts. Like they could essentially pay for everyone to go without tuition for... The That's the same time. thing. I heard a number one it's point crazy. in time. It's the same thing with UVA. I yeah. mean, they can send people to school for like a millennial... And so I'm sure years. there actually is some truth to that, given the yeah. what they actually pay for. What is the uh, so, Jamie, so here's the takeaway from that: those little girls and guys you have. Do you think it's expensive now? Oh no, I'm that's so, his point. I'm telling you, gr the kids. The why? Why do we have a shrinking? Uh, because people can't. Yeah, uh, or Grimes Elementary, and I, I'm not even looking up what Grimes. Uh, I was trying to think of the name of it at first, but I know it's like 20 G a year for elementary school, like. What you know? That's that to me is well, you know, I, I, I'm 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 glad that I just bounce little grandbabies on my knees and hand them back and <laughs> move on, because then you got weddings, by the way. Yeah, that you got to pay for multiple comments. This is from uh, from Coach Michael Buchensky. That's why settlement agents collect the tax escrow account with a few months surplus in case of overage or additional tax fees at a later date. And he also says, pretty sure that that Woodbury tuition is more than UVA. College education is basically four-year vacation at this point, unless the students know exactly what they want to do. Go into vocational training. No millennials will know how to wire a home, so an electrician or trade uh, tradesman, for example, uh -huh. will make a mint in the future. And we well, talk about well, that. that's right. my my, uh, yeah. my whole thing all the time. Are you learning something that you can effectively turn as a tool into a, a profit in the future? Like, are you doing something that? Yeah, you know. I so I'm working on a show with David, a couple of folks from from uh, <clears throat> Ridge Schuyler from uh, uh, right. Uh, the, I can get this out. Piedmont Community College um, to come in here and talk about that. Why are we not doing more of this stuff? And because of the, I hate to say this, because of the stigma. Because the <clears throat> the American dream has been so like manipulated. And well, you were told you were told you have to go to yeah, school. Yeah, because of that. It's like the it's the college is luckily like the I was so, luckily I was someone who f didn't like doing anything he was told to do so that that was really what kept me out of it and, and now <laughs> yeah, sure you joined the Marine Corps <laughs> well, and now you're crushing it and now the dude is crushing yeah, yeah. it yeah so you if you if you take a if you take a look at certain trades and certain folks and and we'll dig this up for a future show they I, crush it. it substantial amount of money yeah substantial amount of money and and not only that I know some very successful plumbers to be just a hundred percent. That's yeah. what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Randy Smith, who you brought on the show, yeah. is watching the program right now. What up, Randy? Um, tennis coach extraordinaire. Yeah. Uh, fantastic realtor that lives in downtown Culpeper, right? Mm -hmm. um, true cost for Woodbury Forest on their website, he says, is 88K. Multiple people are blown away by this, by this amount. Multiple people blown away. I would love to know what's in that endowment, Jamie, if you have any access or, or reach to that, JT. I would love to know that. Um, the UVA endowment is seventeen to twenty million. To seventeen to twenty billion, billion with billion, a B. With yeah, a B. Yeah, yeah. yeah, with a B. Way more than these ten fingers could count. Yeah, yeah. I wonder what Woodbury's is. Yeah, well, it's a lot. Do it's you think? Lot. Do you think it's north? I bet it's got a. It's got a B. You think it, that's what I was going to ask? Yeah. If we put the over under at one billion, you're taking the over. Over. Yeah. Are you on that? Um, Mr. Smith isn't smart enough to figure this one out, so I'm leaving it alone. Uh, it, it's a. It's. It's a big number, and, and whoever can afford it, God bless them, and I'm, I'm glad that they can do it, but um, that's a lot of money. 
It's a, a great school too. Um, anyone that knows that answer, we would certainly love to have it. Um, this question that has come in um, is for Keith, I would imagine. If the future land use map does get approved, like it's, like it's on track to get approved, how does he think that's gonna increase the budget and the money that comes into the budget from the additional density? Yeah, so um, I think that's what they're trying to figure out. So, so the, the land use map has been approved. It is part of the comprehensive plan. As everybody knows, what they're now going through is the uh, zoning portion right. of it. And the zoning, and I don't want to geek out too much on it, but the zoning tax amendment on it and what is in, what, what this is all actually going to look at from a regulatory perspective on the end of it. You look, you know, it, it's a double-edged sword, right? So... Um, if we're able to increase density, expenses will go up. That's just the way life is. But, you know, somebody needs to turn an ROI on it, and hopefully that's what's going to happen, return on investment, and they're going to start looking looking at that. I know this much <clears throat> in the conversation I had with my, with my pop over the weekend, my mom and pop on the weekend. Um, you know, if nothing happens, the costs are going to go up. And that's what that's that's what they were talking about, right? Their their income is not increasing enough for the expenses between inflation, transitory or not. I think transitory is a BS word at the moment. Uh, fourteen months. The, that's apparently fourteen months is transitory. Um, you know the the taxes are going up, HOA dues are going up. You know, so they're they're, they're slowly not being able to afford where they're at. That's going to go up if there's more density or not. Did I do a decent job? I thought of, you did a very okay. good job. And as we identified yesterday, 7% uptick in first years at UVA in the class of 2026. 7% additional more students for the class of 2026 versus 2025. I'm curious. Well, I'm curious. Where are they where they, yeah. Like, right? Wasn't it already tight housing to begin with? But are they, is, is that the uptick of applications or are they increasing the student population? Student or population. Are, they doing some, are they doing some sort of, is this actually students that are living at the university or is this something where they're allowing some sort of online Hybrid enrollment kind of thing, and just yeah. but well, taking the same amount of money and, uh, for, the, uh, for the name? I, I, I would imagine that they're going to try to put as many um, on grounds as possible for the profit centers that come with being on grounds. Yeah. Um, but the logical question is, Scott identified, is where 7% additional students gonna live and how does that impact the housing market? It will. Right. It will, yeah. Not only rental, but home ownership. So I and think not only city of Charlottesville, but surrounding counties, because it's all tied together. Uh, well, we've been talking about that forever. You can't talk Charlottesville without talking Fulvana. You can't talk Fulvana without talking Green. We're all interconnected right. in, this, in, this, in this region. But, so I think UVA students are somewhere between 26 and 27,000, if I remember the math right. Yeah. So they're increasing right. that by 7% is what we're saying? Yeah. Wow. That's, that's a lot. I thought, I thought the applications got increased by by seven percent i misunderstood you um that's a big number yeah so uh, they're cracking 30 grand i mean thirty thousand. that's massive people um uva it's going to be um it's going to be an interesting next uh calendar year and and four years after here in our ecosystem what any closing mm -hmm. thoughts scott morse scott morse is excellent in this uh setting per usual it's the haircut closing thoughts um just uh, if you're out there, and so I've seen a lot, a lot of uh, some brokerages further north kind of doing some uh, preparation for their people over inventory and how are things going to go and don't worry. I think don't worry is the key. Um, people are going to continue to do people things, and if you're out there and you're grinding, go out, make good decisions, make your phone calls, talk to people, do what you need to do to put as many listings into your arena as possible. If you've got buyers, give me a call and I'm happy to help you. Message me on Facebook. I'm only a click away. Very nice. Or a phone call. Um, or a phone call. Smoke Paul, signal if you're very creative. Paul <laughs> Hendricks, Facebook message. Paul Hendricks, you're jumping, uh, you're making us better here. I love you, Paul Hendricks. Uh, Woodbury Endowment is listed at roughly 450 million. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. Less than I thought. Still a lot so of money. So you took the under, didn't you? I uh, no, I didn't. I didn't make a call. I just put the over under at one billion. I got it. Yeah. So and he, I got dots coming in here on Facebook message. So he's about to add um, Phillips Andover, which is another private school, is one point one billion. Holy smokes! He says. Wow. 
private schools. I mean, Woodbury's four hundred and fifty million endowment is massive. Yeah. I wonder what stabs is. Sands, but I, bet, you, I bet you'll get a couple dots here and, and with an answer on that. Ha, no ha, have you guys seen um, St. Anne's um, primary campus over there off Ivy Road? I have not. Dude, it's, it's like a, a college. It is. It's, it's a campus. That's it's a, a campus. It's a campus. Yeah. It is like for a little, college. But little kids don't need all that. Now. It's, it's like a college. I mean, uh, like they don't know. They don't. Exactly. They have no, they have no perspective. Yeah. They don't know. They just think it's, that's what it is. It's strictly to... And anyways, that's to drive we're... emissions. Yeah, I mean it's a business. Um, thank you, Paul. On that, we appreciate that. Keith, any uh, closing thoughts? No, you know, I, again today, I think we like we did on Monday. We just had a couple of short topics. Uh, you know, what, what we do several times, more than several times a week, constantly amazes me. Um, on on our viewers and our listeners, how they make us make me better. That's for sure. And I get asked all the time, why do I do this for? A as often as I do a week, and it's it makes me better at my job. So thank you. Hear you that, everyone. Yona? It makes him better at his job. Um, Thanks, Scott. <laughs> I was I, I was really trying to close the deal here, <laughs> and you just thank you, brother. You know, one marine to another. Thank you. Yoda You're welcome. Is, well, I know what that. Thank you, man. For those that don't know, um, Jamie Turner says. So this is the beautiful thing about the show. We have multiple conversations happening here on like across Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, and Facebook, all and Facebook Messenger, all in the same thing. Jamie says, I remember when I was there in 2014, it was about 300 million. You'll have to dig through his notes from our last advisory council meeting, but I know it's increased significantly. And Paul just answered Jamie's question by saying the endowment is 450 million, which Paul has found um, online. So from 2014 to now, that's eight years, the endowment has gone up 50%. Well, it's also a testament to their you know, fundraising their, capacity uh, and their investment portfolio. Yeah. Well, that's plus, true. There you go. Investment plus, portfolio. you know, graduates going through that, going through university that are, you know, giving money back and, and all that great stuff. And, and Bill says uh, future land use map will inflate land values and higher sell prices will increase taxes along with the increase in the rate. You can see this already in property sales and higher densely, uh, density po uh, proposed yeah. areas. I, I had a conversation yeah. with two city councils about that yesterday, so. All right, gentlemen, um, you guys are fantastic. This is Real Talk on a Wednesday presented by Ross Mortgage and Scott Mortgage Morris. What was the, what the, what we, Gallivanting. 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 The gallivanting Scott. I've got to write that down. Because I've got Scott Mortgage Morris, but we have to do gal the gallivanting yeah, yeah, I Scott. I like it. He's an A plus We're going to get to a full English title by the time. I know, dude. <laughs> sir. So sir. So sir. Long. Gallivanting um, Scott. He is the distinguished gentleman, Keith Smith. Judah Whitcower is our uh, director. My name is Jerry Miller. We have the, um, the doctors behind the Urgency of Normal Toolkit tomorrow. And um, Jeff Vergalis, Dr. Jeff Vergalis, and Dr. Um, Elizabeth Holland on the program, Eliza Holland, Dr. Eliza Holland tomorrow, as they make their medical and scientific push to return schools back to normal in a maskless setting. Mask less setting. Those two doctors who work for the University of Virginia on the show at 1230 to talk about this topic that is near and dear to all our hearts as parents. This is Real Talk. Thank you kindly for joining us. Take care. <laughs>